Hello and welcome back to another video and in this one we're going to be talking about thermal expansion. So thermal expansion is a tendency for materials to increase in size when they heat up and contract uh, when they get cold. And the simplest case for an engineer to consider is the one-dimensional case. And effectively, it's a beam. So in the one-dimensional case, you have a beam that is long and thin and it's one length at a particular temperature. And so you can say this is length one at a particular temperature T1. And then when the part changes temperature, it can expand. Now the thickness will expand as well, but we're only interested in, the, in this length. And it'll expand to a certain amount at temperature Two, and that length would be L2. And that's really what we're trying to capture and measure and then calculate when we're trying to figure out what's going to happen when the temperature changes. So this change or this difference between L2 and L1 um, will either refer to it as delta L between the two lengths, or we'll refer to it as DL, which would be an incremental change in length with a incremental change in temperature, DT. And what we're trying to do is really capture how this strain changes as temperature changes. So we introduce a quantity called thermal expansion, an alpha. And alpha is defined to be the incremental change in the strain with the incremental change in temperature. So it's a differential. So <clears throat> if we actually plot the strain versus temperature curve, for a traditional material starting at zero Kelvin, so that's absolute zero, and this would be zero strain, what we would see is at zero strain and zero Kelvin, there's really no change at all. The, the part stays almost exactly the same length. And then at a certain temperature, it starts to increase. And then it kind of reaches a steady slope or steady state increase with temperature. And so this curve is the strain as a function of temperature. And when we think of thermal expansion coefficient, we're looking at the slope of this curve with temperature. And so that slope, as it changes with temperature, is what we call the instantaneous um, or tangent CTE. So taking a closer look at that, um, we use that thermal expansion coefficient definition which is the derivative, the first derivative of strain with respect to temperature. And we know that strain is equal to um, the incremental change, or the incremental change in length, divided by the original length, which would be L1. So this would be engineering strain. And so if we plug that into there, we get 1 over L1 dl dt. And if we rearrange it and want to determine, okay, if I have a component of a certain length, how will it change for every incremental change in, in uh, temperature? 
um, you rearrange this equation and you get dl is equal to l1 alpha now um, dt. Now alpha is a function of temperature in this instance. You can see that the slope here is different than the slope up here. And so to kind of illustrate that for you, at a particular temperature, you will have a particular slope. And this is why it's called the tangent CTE. And this slope um, is your um, alpha instantaneous or alpha tangent. <clears throat> and so alpha is actually a function of temperature. You can see how the slope changes or alpha changes with temperature. So to solve this equation, you would need to integrate between T1 and T2. Um, so this gives you a more accurate representation of what's happening, but representing alpha in terms of a function and integrating is not, um, it's not that easy um, when you're trying to do uh, simple back of the envelope calculations or even more in-depth calculations. And so what engineers have come up with is the um, average or secant CTE. Now this is probably what engineers are most familiar with. And the average or secant CTE, um, we take that definition of strain and we say, okay, it's approximately equal to a delta in strain divided by a delta in temperature. And so what that would look like is the strain at temperature 2 minus the strain at temperature 1 divided by the temperature 2 minus temperature 1. So if you have a particular temperature range, for example, let's say this is T1 and this is T2, you would have your, you would look at the strain at those two temperatures. This would be strain 1. This would be strain two. And it's effectively drawing a straight line between those two temperatures and saying that that line or the slope of that line is your average CTE between those two temperatures. Notice the instantaneous CTE was at a single temperature and the average CTE is across two temperatures. So you're just looking at the slope of that line. Now, in a temperature range where um, the thermal expansion coefficient is somewhat of a constant, or the slope um, is somewhat constant, uh, the average CTE is a really good measure. So if you, for example, drew, uh, if T1 was here and T2 is here, that's a fairly straight line. Um, your average and your secant and your instantaneous CTE are all about the same. But down here in this transition region, um, it's going to be a very different story. So um, we can further illustrate that by looking at the thermal expansion coefficient alpha versus temperature. Again, starting at zero Kelvin, and um, that would be zero thermal expansion coefficient. If you take a look at the um, the CTE or the instantaneous CTE versus temperature, it'll start out at zero, be zero, and then it'll move up quickly and then start to saturate. And that saturation um, CTE is equivalent to that alpha equaling approximately a constant value. And so in this range, you have a very large change in CTE with temperature in this range you don't have very, a very large change in CTE. So um, you can see, so this would be alpha instantaneous. So if you were to use the average CTE between this T1 and this T2, your average CTE would be something like this, um, a constant value. 
so you can see that it's quite large. Um, it has a crossover point, but it's it's a, a poor estimate at the extremes. Whereas if you chose an average CTE here, then um, it's not a problem. So where you apply the average or secant CTE or a tangent or instantaneous CTE depends greatly on the temperature, it depends on the material, and some other parameters that we'll get into in the next video.